In this topic, we will going to discuss about visualizing data. I know this is always a favorite topic for any data analyst, engineer, machine learning or person who is performing in, in the general inquiry of the data because it's been said that a picture is worth more than 1000 words because in a picture you can clearly see what is going on with the with with your data and very easily you can jump on some sort of a decision by connecting the dots all right so how you can do the visualization of data well the first thing is you need to add the package in julia for that you need to first import the package using pkg and then say pkg dot add and plots and that's pretty much it it will take some time to download all the dependencies here in julia and afterwards you can start using it so since i have already done that i will not going to do it again and start using the plots right that's what we have been doing from past couple of videos so by now you will be all well versed with the with this keyword the using keyword and first we will try to make a normal or the blank plot so for example to create a plot the simple function is creating just the plot one it takes some time once um, you know we are starting off with this and then it will plot all of the different values with the different parameters very quickly all right so this plot the blank plot has been created as you could see here that plot has created this very basic with the one by one axis so this is x axis this is y axis and i'm sure you are aware and here if you can really see in this video these are some of the grid lines which is being given over here right so let's plot some values into it so for that we will take let's say x and y value x for this y for this right so we take x as 1 to 5 right semicolon and after that i can write or assign the y parameter or i can write it in the next line up to you so this is another way since i have been writing in another line this is another way by which you can do the multiple assignments of the variable and we want the random let's say 15 values and when we execute it gives us this output so i don't want that because anyway i will going to plot it so now i will use plot and simple x comma y and it will give me the plot with these oops it throws an error and looks like this is having issue in accessing five element and uh, probably what i need is basically 15 over here just to match up with the y values so execute this execute this and now working fine right so just to remember about x and y values but don't worry this is mostly the uh, the made up example but in a data frame you will get proper values and we will see it in action in couple of uh, minutes so plot x and y give you the random values which are plotted on these values so if you see we have 15 values but we were giving only five points on the x-axis and that's why it was throwing an error that was the basic one all right um afterwards if you want to add additional series like uh, for example along with this you want to add another one you can have let's say z value and uh, another random with 15 execute this oh i don't want the output shift enter and then plot exclamation sign this is called the mutating the plot object so that means adding the information plot x comma c so y will be preserved and you are adding the c so you have earlier we had this blue line now we have along with the blue line we have this particular line over here right so this way you can keep on adding if that's what you need uh, for your line chart afterwards let's see um, another way by which you can achieve the this particular you know operation 
So this is by creating an object, for example, p equals to plot x comma y, right? And then plot mutating the object, the first plot object, which is the existing plot, comma x comma c. So similar to what we have done it over here, this is an alternative way. If we execute this, we will get the similar output, right? So up to you, whatever way you want, uh, either way is fine. I like the first way because we created our first plot and then add the Z series. Uh, this one is slightly complex, but some people prefer it. So up to you, what you what approach you want to follow. Okay, now let's see how we can add the title to the plot. So plot x comma y comma and as you would expect, the parameter is title to or one random line chart right one random line chart there are lots of things that you can do with the title i will just leave it up to you what you want to do uh, and uh, put your link to the documentation so that you maybe you want to color it you want to border it a lot of things that can be done um, now let's see how you can relabel this y1 doesn't make a lot of sense right so plot x comma y comma title equals to random line chart equals to um comma label equals to line one line chart one or whatever like if you have a business of business uh something like business value product name or something like that you can give it name to that line chart one but if you have more than two line chart like we have it in this case then what you need to do is simply say within the brackets surround this by bracket and say line chart two comma oh sorry afterwards comma line chart three and so on and so forth so if if it is single value just directly have an double quotation and provide the value if you have more than two line chart and want to modify the value you have to do it within these brackets all right so i will just remove it this is the thing information i just wanted to show you so that you are not facing error when you are working in the real life now afterwards um, let's try to change the labels of x and y axis um, for that x comma y that's our first comma x label equals to x axis label right now we don't have anything comma for y there is y label y axis label we can you can give more meaningful based on the business condition that you have in hand y axis label x axis label so this way you can modify we have seen how you can modify the title or add the title how you can add the legends or the labels you can add the x-axis label y-axis label to make your chart more and more informative for your end user now let me just drag up a little bit and now let's try to create a scatter chart so for that the function is scatter x comma y and this will create a beautiful scatter chart instead of line chart so this is x-axis so up till 15 values and this is your values over here right so this is a scatter chart again you can apply title x-axis y-axis and whatnot that we have already discussed okay next is creating a bar chart so x comma y very very easy straightforward and this will create a good bar chart for us right so this was a scatter chart this is the same representation here in the bar chart again you can add labels x-axis y-axis or legends to it as per your needs then we have histogram i hope you are aware about the histogram and we just need to pass one value which is y value because it produces the count of each value so right now i'm not going too much in depth just i'm trying to show you the ways uh, in which you can or the functions by which you can create these beautiful charts as you can see now let's try to combine all of this into one single sort of a dashboard right 
so very exciting so first of all let's store these plots so plot x comma y p2 scatter x comma y what i'm doing is not plotting but of storing the object and then i can use these objects for the for the purpose of presenting all of this information in a beautiful way like a dashboard way p4 equals to histogram and then only the y and now you need plot within the plot p1 p2 p3 and p4 now we need to specify the layout parameter what layout we want so we want a two by two matrix that means two charts you know up and two charts down below to it so layout equals to two comma two so two rows two columns and we don't want legend false and let's try to print it and this is our beautiful dashboard isn't it looking nice right so this is very very straightforward as you could see in just a couple of seconds once we know how what are all the data points we need what are all the charts we need we can create a chart like this give a beautiful title to it and do much more to this but in just a couple of seconds i would just want to show you how you can really utilize uh, the power of visualization within the julia all right let's move on similar to this how you can plot a chart on top of each other for example we want to create the four different line charts or four different bar charts so what i'm doing is create again reinitializing the y variable with 10 data points with four series so basically four different random variables of uh, 10 data points and then i'm saying plot x comma y i'm keeping x same i need to write 15 probably yeah otherwise it will throw an error and then layout equals to four comma one that means four row and one column that means stack on top of each other so if i press shift enter here is my four different charts right similarly you can have bar chart you can have scatter chart or any other chart just by having this layout parameter and making sure you are having the the series proper so we have these four series that's why we are able to plot it now let's move on to an interesting part uh, where we can have the data frame plotted so for that i will say using csv to import the csv data and earlier we have imported this iris data so i will say again we will going to work with that csv dot read and if you remember we need to normalize the names so normalize names equals to true so once we do that it will import the iris data for us which we can then use into the visualization all right so data is inside inside here within the julia and now we can have all our different charts and matrix charts over here so for example first of all i will plot a line chart and uh, for this iris dot sepal length let's say um this is let's say this is the only one i want so i can just go ahead and plot this this is how your chart will going to look like and by default it has identified that it has 150 data points okay so this is a line chart now let's create a bar chart so bar iris dot species because species is the x-axis and then iris dot let's say petal length right and here is our beautiful bar chart afterwards let's try to create scatter chart and scatter is needs to have the two numerical axes so iris dot petal length comma iris dot petal width okay so petal length and petal width if i go up petal length petal width is your numeric columns so for scatter chart need to make sure that this is what you need the numeric axis so this is a beautiful looking the scatter chart which is showing us the pattern clearly visible that this is one pattern this is another pattern right now finally let's see quickly 
the histogram and for that we will just need the one variable the pedal length we you can make it more complex but this is just for the beginner's perspective to get to know about end up and running in julia and that's how you can simply create the charts within the julia directly by importing the data files because that's what we will be doing more and more in julia programming once we learn the basics so that's about it uh, the different types of charts the files the basic charts with, with some makeup made up value and uh, values which we are importing from the file like iris how we can create that visualization and use it so i hope you have found it useful and now i will meet you in the next topic